and electrochemistry. <coughs> what is meant by redox reaction? The simultaneous oxidation and reduction. Oxidation means it is removal of electron and reduction means addition of electron. And that is the electronic concept of oxidation and reduction. According to the oxidation number method, increase in oxidation number is oxidation and decrease in oxidation number is reduction. And therefore, whenever we uh, go to the balancing of a redox reaction, we have to assign the oxidation number for every element. And how can you assign the oxidation number? And there are a set of rules to assign the oxidation number to each and every element. The first rule is oxidation number of all elements in the free state is zero. Second is the sum of the oxidation number of all elements in a compound is zero and in an ion it is a charge carried by the ion. The oxidation number of alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium, in its compound is always plus one. Oxidation number of alkaline earth metals, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium, it is always plus two in its compounds. The oxidation number of hydrogen, it is usually plus one, except in metallic hydride, it is minus one. For example, in sodium hydride, NH, sodium it is having plus one. And therefore, hydrogen should have minus one, then only the sum is equal to zero. And that is usually in water or in CH4 or whatever be the hydride, it is usually plus one hydrogen oxidation number. But in metallic hydride, it is minus one. Oxidation number of oxygen is usually minus two in its oxide. In peroxide, it is minus one. Water, it is an oxide of hydrogen. The oxygen is having minus two oxidation number. But in hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, oxidation number of oxygen is minus one. And in peroxide, it is minus one. In superoxide, superoxide, it is minus half. For example, potassium superoxide is KO2. Potassium, it is plus one. The sum of the oxidation number of two oxygen atoms should be minus one. The four oxygen atom is having minus half oxidation number. Oxidation number of oxygen in OF2, oxygen difluoride, it is plus two because the oxidation number of fluorine, it is always minus one. And these are the rules governing the oxidation number. That is oxygen to the Minus two under oxide layer, minus one under peroxide layer, minus half under superoxide layer, plus two under OF2 layer. Fluorine always minus one. Hydrogen is plus one usual hydride layer, and it is minus one in metallic hydride. And these are the rules. Alkali metals in the polyum, plus one in its compound. Alkaline earth metals in the polyum plus two in its compound. And these are the rules governing the oxidation number. Therefore, we can say that what is the oxidation number of carbon in CH4? Carbon, it is having hydrogen de plus one, null hydrogen de plus four. Our carbon is a minus four in CH4. And that is sum should be equal to zero. And what is the oxidation number of 
that is carbon in ethane C two H six R hydrogen to the plus six. Our end carbon to the minus six. Our carbon to the minus three. What is the oxidation number of carbon in carbon dioxide? CO two. Oxygen to minus two. Two oxygen to minus four. Our carbon to the plus four. What is the oxidation number of carbon in carbon monoxide? Oxygen to minus two, and therefore carbon to the it is minus that is plus two. Oxygen to minus two, carbon to the plus two, and this is the way in which we can assign the oxidation number for any element in a compound, and these are the rules governing the oxidation number. And therefore, if you consider potassium permanganate (KMnO4), what is the oxidation number of manganese in potassium permanganate? That is, potassium always plus one, oxygen minus two. Therefore, it is minus eight. And therefore, that is manganese is in the plus seven oxidation state because the sum should be equal to zero. And this is the way in which we can assign the oxidation number for each and every elements. And the redox reaction means the simultaneous oxidation and the reduction. That is, increase in oxidation number is oxidation, decrease in oxidation number is reduction. For sodium, when it loses an electron and become Na plus, sodium is being get oxidized. And chlorine, it is zero, and Cl minus, it is minus one. Decrease in oxidation number, it is reduction. So when sodium combined with chlorine to give sodium chloride, sodium is being get oxidized and chlorine is being get reduced. That is when sodium combined with chlorine to give NaCl sodium chloride, sodium zero to plus one. And chlorine zero to minus one, sodium is being get oxidized and chlorine is being get reduced. Here it is the simultaneous oxidation and the reduction, and therefore it is an example for a redox reaction. That is sodium, it is reduced by and it is oxidized by chlorine and it should get oxidized. And it is oxidized by chlorine. Therefore, chlorine is an oxidizing agent. Whereas chlorine is being get reduced by sodium. Therefore, sodium is a reducing agent. And that is the simultaneous oxidation and reduction is called redox reaction. And the question number one. What is three Br two plus six? CO three two minus plus three H two O gives five Br minus plus BrO three minus plus six HCO three minus. That is, it is an example for a redox reaction. That is three Br two plus six CO three two minus plus three H two O gives. Five Br minus plus Br O three minus plus six HCO three minus. First of all, you have to assign the oxidation number of all the elements, and then we can say which is being oxidized and which is being reduced. Bromine free state zero. Carbonate ion that is O three means minus six, and the sum should be minus two. Therefore, carbon should be in the plus four oxidation state. That is, O three means minus six, and if carbon is a x, x plus minus six gives minus two. Therefore, carbon is having plus four oxidation state. Hydrogen plus one, and oxygen minus two, and in five Br minus bromine is minus one oxidation state because in an ion. The oxidation number is a charge carried by the ion, and BrO three minus O three means minus six, 
and sum should be minus one. Therefore, bromine is in the plus five oxidation state. HCO three minus hydrogen plus one oxygen minus two, and therefore three oxygen minus six, and sum should be minus one. Therefore, carbon is in the plus four oxidation state, and that is. In the reactants, carbon is in the plus four oxidation state. In the product also, carbon is in the plus four oxidation state. There is no change in the oxidation number. Oxygen is the minus two oxidation state, both in the reactants and the product. Hydrogen is the plus one oxidation state, both in the reactants and the product. Therefore, which is change the oxidation number of bromine. The oxidation number of bromine that is zero to Minus one when it become Br minus. That is, it is being get reduced. And here it is plus five. That means it is being get oxidized. One bromine atom get oxidized to give plus five oxidation state. That is, five electrons are removed from one bromine atom, and these five electrons are added to other five bromine atom to give five Br minus. Therefore, here. The oxidizing agent is bromine, and the reducing agent is also bromine. It is a simultaneous oxidation and a reduction, and the reducing agent as well as the oxidizing agent are one and the same. And such redox reaction is called disproportionation reaction, self oxidation reduction. In organic chemistry, you are studying. can is zero's reaction aldehydes which does not contain alpha hydrogen atom when treated with concentrated alkali undergo disproportionation reaction one molecule is being get oxidized to give the corresponding acid and another molecule is being get reduced to give the corresponding alcohol that is known as can is zero's reaction it is also an example for redox reaction it is simultaneous oxidation and reduction and it is disproportionation because the same atom or molecule get oxidized as well as reduced therefore here the choice is the correct choice is d bromine is both reduced and oxidized remember such reactions are called disproportionation reaction self oxidation and reduction the second question for the redox reaction what is the correct coefficient of the reactants for the balance the reaction that is you have to balance a redox reaction and the balancing of redox reaction can be carried out in two ways one is oxidation number method other is the ion electron method in oxidation number method the oxidation number of all elements are assigned and we have to find out the oxidizing agent which is being get reduced as well as the reducing agent which is being get oxidized and you have to equate the number of the increase in the oxidation number and the decrease in the oxidation number then it is the balanced redox reaction and if it is an acid medium whenever there is hydrogen hydrogen is deficient you have to put the hydrogen ions and that is the balancing of redox reaction in according to the oxidation number method and ion electron method there we have to separate the equation into two one is the oxidation of reaction and the second is the reduction of reaction you have to balance each oxidation of reaction and that is a uh, reduction of reaction separately and then you have to equate it by that is in oxidation of reaction there is liberation of electron and in reduction of reaction addition of electron and the number of electron should be equated in both oxidation of reaction and uh, that is reduction of reaction either by cross multi multiplying it or by suitable method then you have to add it and you will get the balanced redox reaction and that is the way in which 
we can balance the redox reaction and that is the oxidation number method and the off reaction method or that is the what is the off reaction method and that is ion electron method mno4 minus permanganate ion plus c2o4 2 minus oxalate ion plus h plus gives mn2 plus plus co2 plus h2o this is the redox reaction now i am trying to balance it by oxidation number method First, you have to assign the oxidation number, MnO4 minus, if X is the oxidation number of manganese and X plus 4 into minus 2, minus 8, should be equal to minus 1 and therefore X is equal to plus 7 in permanganate ion or in potassium permanganate. Manganese is in the plus 7 oxidation state. And C2O4 2 minus oxalate ion and here O4 means minus 8 and 2 carbon atom 2x minus 8 is equal to minus 2 and therefore 2x is equal to 6 and therefore x is equal to plus 3. That is carbon is in the plus 3 oxidation state and that is the oxidation number of each element and we can see that in man manganese 2 plus the oxidation number is plus 2. Therefore, Mn plus 7 oxidation state decreases to Mn2 plus and that means it acts as reducing agent itself being, sorry, it acts as oxi oxidizing agent itself being get reduced from plus 7 to plus 2. And oxalate ion, that is carbon is in the plus 3 oxidation state, but in carbonate, it is carbon dioxide, it is plus 4. And therefore, increase in oxidation number, that is, it is being get oxidized, that means it acts as the reducing agent. And therefore, what is the change in oxidation number of manganese, that is, plus 7 to plus 2, change in oxidation number is 5. And here, 2 carbon atom in the plus 3 oxidation state will be converted to 2 carbon atom in the plus 4 oxidation state. Therefore, the change in the oxidation number is 2 into plus 1, that is one, 2. The change in the oxidation number is 2. For each carbon atom, it is plus 3 to plus 4. Therefore, for 2 carbon atom, it is the change in oxidation number is 2. How can you equate the oxidation number, change in the oxidation number? That is, you have to cross multiply it. You have to multiply this by 2, then it becomes 10. This by 5, then also it becomes 10. That is cross multiplication. And therefore, 2 MnO4 minus plus 5 C2O4 2 minus plus H plus gives 2 Mn2 plus plus 10 CO2 plus H2O. And this is the equation that is obtained by, that is, uh, we are equating the change in the oxidation number of the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. Now you have to look into the balancing of oxygen. That is, here, two C2, 5 C2O4 means 20 oxygen and 10 CO2, 20 oxygen. And the 2 MnO4, 8 oxygen. And it can be balanced by putting 8 water. Therefore, it is equal to 8 H2O. And now you have to balance the hydrogen and it is acid medium. Therefore, 8 H2 means 16 H plus. It is 16 H plus. Now it is a balanced redox reaction. And now we can assign the coefficient for each in the redox reaction. That is. 2 MnO4 minus 5 C2O4 2 minus and 16 H plus. That means the choice is A. The choice is A. 2 MnO4 minus plus 5 C2O4 2 minus 
plus 16 H plus gives 2 Mn2 plus plus 10 CO2 plus 8 H2O. This is the way in which we have to balance the redox reaction. The third question is, in which of the following pairs there is greatest difference in the oxidation number of the underlined elements? NO2 and N2O4. What is the oxidation number of nitrogen in NO2? O2 means 2 into minus 2, minus 4. And therefore, it is the plus 4 oxidation state. NO2, it is in the plus 4 oxidation state. N2O4, O4 means minus 8. And over 2 nitrogen atom is in the plus 8. Therefore, nitrogen atom, it is plus 4 oxidation state both in NO2 as well as N2O4. In NO2 it is plus 4, in N2O4 also it is plus 4. There is no change in the oxidation number. P2O5, P2O5 means, O5 means minus 10. Two phosphorus atom in the plus 10 oxidation state, therefore phosphorus is in the plus 5 oxidation state. In P4 or 10, P4 or 10, oxygen is 10, minus 2 into 10, minus 20. Four oxygen atoms are plus 20. Therefore, phosphorus is in the plus 5 oxidation state. There is no change in the oxidation number for P2O5 and P4 or 10. N2O, nitrous oxide, N2O. Oxygen is minus 2, two nitrogen atoms is in the plus 2. And therefore, nitrogen is the plus one oxidation state. NO, nitric oxide. Oxygen is the minus two. Therefore, nitrogen is the plus two oxidation state. That is, increase in oxidation number is one. Plus one to plus two. In SO2, oxygen is minus two. Upper two oxygen at a minus four. Sulfur is the plus four oxidation state. In SO3, oxygen is minus two. 3 oxygen atom minus 6, therefore sulfur is in the plus 6 oxidation state. Therefore, there are the changes from plus 4 to plus 6. That is, change is 2. And what is asked, in which of the following pairs there is greatest difference in the oxidation number of the underlying element? That means the answer is D. SO2 and SO3. The oxidation state of sulfur in the anions, SO3 2 minus sulfate ion, S2O4 2 minus, and S2O6 2 minus, follow the order. You have to assign the oxidation number of sulfur in SO3 2 minus, S2O4 2 minus, and S2O6 2 minus. And the same way we can assign the oxidation number of sulfur in SO3 2 minus, S2O4 2 minus, and S2O6 2 minus. SO4 2 minus means if sulfur is having oxidation number X, X plus 4 into minus 2, minus 8 is equal to minus 2. That means sulfur is in the plus 6 oxidation state. In S2O4 2 minus, O4 minus 8, and 2 sulfur atom, 2x minus 8, it is equal to minus 2. Therefore, 2 sulfur atom, it is having plus 6 oxidation state. Sulfur is in the plus 3 oxidation state. And in S2O6, 2 minus. O6 means minus 12. 2x minus 12 is equal to minus 2. Therefore, 2x is equal to my, uh, plus 10 and therefore sulfur is in the plus 5 oxidation state. That is the oxidation number of sulfur in SO3 to minus. How will you find out? X plus my, 4 into minus 2. 8 is equal to minus 2. Therefore, X is equal to plus 6. In S2 O4 to minus 2X minus 8 is equal to minus 2. Therefore, 2x is equal to 6 and therefore x is equal to 3. Here, S2O6 2 minus, here it is 2x 
minus 12 is equal to minus 2. Therefore, 2x is equal to 10 or x is equal to 5. S2, SO32 minus SO3. SO3, SO3 means 6. And therefore, it is equal to that is plus 4. Sulfur is the plus 4. And SO32 minus sulfite ion. It is in the plus 4 oxidation state. And therefore, it is that is plus 4, plus 3, plus 5. That means that is. The increasing order, the following order, that is S2O4 2 minus S2O4 2 minus is less than SO3 2 minus is less than S2O6 2 minus. That means the answer is S2O4 2 minus less than SO3 2 so S2, uh, SO3 2 minus 3, 4, 5. Therefore, 3, 4, 5. That means S2O4 2 minus less than SO3 2 minus less than S2O6 2 minus. Therefore, the choice is D. The choice is D. And this is the way in which we can assign the oxidation number of any element and the balancing of redox reaction can be also carried out by give the by these rules and that about the redox reaction then there is electrochemistry electrochemistry deals with two type of changes one is the production of electricity by the proper conductance of redox reaction and an electrochemical cell which will carry out the production of electricity by the proper conductance of redox reaction is known as galvanic cell or voltaic cell. That is one type of electrochemical cell. Another type is, that is electrolytic cell. Here, chemical changes are induced by passing electricity. And that is known as electrolytic cell. These are the two type of electrochemical cells. That is, electrochemistry deals with either the production of electricity by the proper conductance of redox reaction or the chemical changes induced by passing electricity. These are the two type of, that is, reactions in electrochemistry. We know that, that is, the, there are two laws of electrolysis. Both laws are enunciated by Faraday. The first class says that the amount of substance deposited or liberated during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passed. That is, W is proportional to Q. And Q, it is nothing but the quantity of electricity. And it is equal to the constant in I in ampere into time in second. And therefore, W, it is proportional to Q or proportional to I into T. Or W is equal to a proportionality constant Z into I into T. And that is the first law of Faraday. The second law of Faraday states that when the same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytic solution, the amount of substance deposited or liberated is directly proportional to their equivalent mass. That is, WA is proportional to EA, WB is proportional to EB, or WA by WB is equal to EA by EB. This is the second law of Faraday. And that is the quantitative aspect of electrochemistry is given by these two laws. The first law of Faraday and the second law of Faraday. By using this equation, we can also find out what that is combining the first law and second law. We can say that W is proportional to Q and W is proportional to E. And therefore, W is proportional to E into Q or that is, it is equal to a proportionality constant 1 by F into 
e into q and that is w is equal to e by f into q and w is equal to z into q or z into it and therefore what is z it is equal to e by f z is the electrochemical equivalent which is the amount of substance deposed or deflected by passing a quantity of one one ampere current string one one second as that is i is equal to one ampere and t in time it is one second that is one that is coulomb of electricity q is equal to one coulomb of electricity and that is z the electrochemical equivalent and if fade constant it is the quantity of electricity required to deposit or liberate that is one equivalent of a substance because q if it is f then e by f into f it is equal to w that is fade constant is the quantity of electricity required to deposit one equivalent of a substance and that is known as the the equivalent weight of a substance is the amount of substance deposited or liberated by passing one faraday of electricity and one faraday of electricity is a charge carried by one mole of electrons have got the number of electron and it is approximately equal to 96500 coulomb and therefore w is equal to e by f into i into t where w is the amount of substance deposited e is the equivalent mass of that substance and f is the faraday constant which is approximately 96500 coulomb and i is the current strength in ampere and t is the time in second this is the quantitative aspect of electrochemistry and in galvanic or voltaic cell the cell in which electricity is produced by the proper conductance of redox reaction there are two type of cells one is primary cells and other is secondary cell in primary cell we can produce electricity for a particular period only and that is after that the cell will dead for example the dry cell is an example for a primary cell in secondary cell the cell reactions can be reversed and re that is we can uh, again and again we can produce electricity and that is it is secondary cell the lead acid accumulates it is example for a secondary cell there are another type of cells are the fuel cells that is in conventional mode of production of electricity that is we are converting the mechanical energy into electrical energy that is in hydroelectric project what is happening that is the turbine is rotated by the power of falling water through tunnel and by the mechanical energy is produced and this mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy that is in hydroelectric project in thermal electric project what is happening is a lot of heat is produced by burning the fuels coal or naphtha or whatever be the fuel used it is used to produce a lot of heat and water is boiled and steam is generated and the steam will rotate the turbine to produce electricity that is also the conversion of the mechanical energy into electrical energy in nuclear power stations also that is the due to the nuclear fission a lot of heat is produced and that heat is utilized for producing steam and using that turbine is rotated and electricity is produced but these methods are that is having certain defects one is their efficiency is less hydroelectric project there is no that is uh, environment there is a certain environmental effect is there because a lot of a forest area will be that is uh, under this water clog as well as in the case of the thermal power plant there is lot of that is pollution is produced and in nuclear power station there is no uh, pollution etc but it is very risky that if an explosion can takes place like in Chermo chernobyl etc and but and the efficiency is less in all these conventional mode of production of electricity but in fuel cells 
in fuel cells what is happening is electricity is produced by directly by the combustion of fuel that is fuels are used for combustion and during this combustion they are converted to electrical energy and that is what is happening in a fuel cell for example hydrogen oxygen fuel cell hydrogen are passed through one compartment oxygen through another compartment and the middle compartment contain alkali and the hydrogen and oxygen combine to give water and during this a lot of energy is produced that is converted to electrical energy the efficiency is very high as well as there is no that is pollution etc and that is the application of the fuel cell it is continuous process also we can produce as much as electricity during that is if you pass hydrogen and oxygen or the combustion of fuel and in apollo space shuttle the hydrogen oxygen fuel cells are used and that is the electricity is produced for the space shuttle as well as the by product is water which is used in the added to the drinking water source of the astronauts and that is the advantage of fuel cells and anyway these are the various type of electrochemical cells that is the galvanic cell as well as the electrolytic cell and electrochemistry deals with such redox reactions the question number 5 which one of the following is correct equivalent conductance decreases with the dilution what is equivalent conductance it is a conductance of all ions present in a solution containing 1 g equivalent of the electrolyte it is the uh that is equivalent conductance is the conductance of all ions present in a solution containing 1 g equivalent of the electrolyte and equivalent conductance decreases with dilution it is wrong because equivalent conductance increases upon dilution what are the factors influencing the ionic conductance there are four factors and influencing the ionic conductance one is inter ionic attraction that is in sodium chloride is an electrolyte and in sodium chloride when it is added to water it will dissociate to give na plus and cl minus and the attraction between na plus and cl minus is known as the inter ionic attraction and the inter ionic attraction increases the conductance decreases because the conductance is the migration of cation to the cathode and anion to the anode and therefore they are traveling to the oppositely charged electrode and that is if the inter ionic attraction increases the conductance decreases then the second factor influencing the ionic conductance is that is the solvation or hydration if water is the media used it is the hydration if another solvent is used the solvation that is the ions are surrounded by the solvent molecule or water molecule that is called hydration or the solvation we know that when the size of the ion increases its mobility decreases and thereby the conductance also decreases we know that in alkali metals they are very good conductors ionic conductors that is li plus na plus k plus that is alkali metal ions are very good ionic conductors and if you consider the size down in the group the size increases and the conductivity the conductance also decreases because the size increases but lithium ion it is heavily hydrated and therefore its mobility is less therefore we will expect that in molten state the ionic conductance of alkali metal ions are in the order li plus greater than na plus greater than k plus greater than rb plus greater than cm plus but in aqueous solution the reverse is a true that is cesium ion greater than that is rubidium ion greater than that is potassium ion greater than sodium ion greater than lithium ion because of the hydration the hydration is maximum in lithium ion and therefore size become very high and its mobility decreases and that is the hydration or solvation increases the conductance 
decreases. But inner ionic attraction increases, conductance decreases. The hydration or solvation increases, conductance decreases. And the third is, that is, that is viscosity. It is the hindrance for the flow. And that is, it is the solvent use, depending upon the solvent use, the viscosity. The viscosity increases. The conductance decreases. The fourth factor is temperature. When the temperature increases, definitely the mobility of ions increases and therewith the conductance increases. These are the four factors influencing the ionic conductance. That is the interionic attraction, which accounts for the solute solute interaction, the solvation or hydration, which is accounting for the solute solvent interaction, and the third is the viscosity, which accounts for the solvent solvent interaction, and the fourth is temperature. The first three factors increases, the conductance decreases, and the fourth factor increases, the conductance increases. And these are the factors influencing the ionic conductance. Here, the equivalent conductance, the statement is equivalent conductance decreases upon dilution. What happens upon dilution? Upon dilution, the ions are far apart and thereby the interionic attraction decreases, thereby the conductance increases. And at infinite dilution, the conductance is maximum because there is no interionic attraction. That is known as the equivalent conductance or molar conductance at infinite dilution, lambda m of zero. And that is, it is a sum of the ionic conductance. And that is known as the, the equivalent conductance or molar conductance upon dilution, it increases. Our statement is wrong. The statement B is, Specific conductance increases with dilution. What do you mean the specific condition, specific conductance? It is a conductance of unit volume of solution. That is known as specific conductance. It is a conductance of one cc or one m cube of a solution. And that is, we know that upon dilution, the number of ions per cc or number of ions per unit volume, it decreases, thereby the conductance decreases Therefore, specific conductance increases with dilution. It is wrong. Our statement A is wrong. Statement B is wrong. Statement C is specific conductance decreases with dilution. It is true because the number of ions per unit volume decreases upon dilution and therefore the specific conductance, that is, it decreases upon dilution. The fourth choice Equivalent conductance increases with increasing conductance. It is also true. And therefore, the answer is the correct answer, is which is wrong, is choice C. Time required to dip and deposit one millimole of aluminum metal by the passage of 9.65 ampere through molten electrolyte containing aluminum ionase. That is the quantity aspect of electrochemistry. And we can use the formula W is equal to E by F into I into T. That is the amount of substance deposit or liberated, it is equal to E by F into I into T. And here, what is asked, you have to find out the time required for. You have to find out the time required for Deposit one millimole of aluminium. That is, T is equal to WF by E into I. W is equal to E by F into I into T. Therefore, T is equal to WF into E into I. W is one millimole of aluminium. Then 27 gram is one mole of aluminium. Therefore, one millimole means 27 into 10 raised to minus 3. 1000 millimole is one mole, and therefore one millimole is 27 into 10 raised to minus 3 gram into 96,500. That is Faraday constant. Equivalent weight of aluminium. Equivalent weight of an element is atomic weight by valency. 
aluminum it is trivalent and therefore its atomic weight is 27 and its equivalent weight is 27 by 3 9 9 into current strength is 9.65 and therefore 9.65 and 96500 it is equal to 10 raised to 4 10000 and therefore 10 raised to 4 into 10 raised to minus 3 it is equal to 10 that is 927, 3 and 3 into 10, 30. 30 seconds is required to deposit 1 millimole of aluminum metal by the passage of 9.65 amperes through molten electrolyte containing aluminum ion. Seventh question is, among the formula given below, which one is correct? That is, Conductivity kappa is equal to 1 by R into L by A. L by A is the cell constant. And therefore, conductivity is equal to cell constant by resistance. It is true. B choice, conductivity is equal to conductance into L by A. That is conductance into cell constant. We know that the reciprocal of the resistance is the conductance. And therefore, kappa or conductivity is equal to conductance into cell constant is also correct. True. Choice C is molar conductivity is conductance is equal to conductivity into 1000 by molar concentration. It is also true. And D choice all of this. Therefore, the answer is D. That is A, B and C are correct. Therefore, the choice is D. Faraday's law of electrolysis is not applicable when temperature is increased, inert electrodes are used, a mixture of electrolytes is used, all of them will follow Faraday's laws. And non electrolytes are taken, non electrolytes are having no influence on Faraday's law. Faraday's law is due to that is, it is, uh, it is for electrolytes only. The amount of substance deposed or liberated by passing, that is, that is, it is related to the electrolytes. Electrolytes will also undergo the dissociation. Non electrolyte will not undergo dissociation. Therefore, answer is D. An electric current of T amp uh, I amperes was passed through a solution of an electrolyte for. Uh, that is T seconds depositing W gram of the metal M on the cathode. The equivalent mass E of the metal will be, we know that, that is W is equal to E by F into I into T and what is E? E is equal to W into F by I into T. And F is the Faraday constant. It is 96,500 and therefore the answer is 96,500 into W by I into T, the choice is C. The choice is C. The electrode consists of a metal in contact with sparingly soluble salt and an electrolyte containing a common ion is called metal sparingly soluble salt of the metal electrode. Choice is D. Which of the following is wrong regarding fuel cells? They are high, they are of light masses. It is true because we are using fuels usually and therefore they are light in, that is mass. They are efficient, that is the efficiency is very high. That is in conventional method, the efficiency is very less. 40% and less is the efficiency in conventional method. But in fuel cell, the efficiency is 70 percentage and above. And therefore, A is true, B is true. They cause no pollution. It is also true. And that is the wrong statement is they cannot work continuously. They can work continuously. Until we stop the passage of hydrogen or oxygen or the fuels, it will continuously produce electricity. Above which of the following is wrong is that is statement D. Which of the following is a secondary cell? 
that is a cell which can be recharged and be reused. I have already mentioned lead storage battery or lead acid accumulator is an example for secondary cell. Therefore, the answer is both A and B, lead storage battery and acid accumulator. And C choice is Lacanche cell. It is nothing but dry cell is a modification of Lacanche cell. It is a primary cell. Molar conductivity of ammonium hydroxide can be calculated by the equation. And that is, in the case of strong alkaline, it obey debye alkyl onsager equation. And we can, that is, plot the variation of concentration and the lambda m. And we can extrapolate the graph to, that is, concentration zero, that is at infinite dilution, we will get the value of the molar conductance at infinite dilution for a strong electrolyte from the graph. But for weak electrolyte, we will not get the value of, that is, the molar conductance at infinite dilution from the graph because it does not obey the by huckleon sager equation. That is, strong electrolytes obey the debye huckel onsager equation, that is, if you plot the molar conductance at various concentration, root concentration and lambda m, and we can extrapolate it to the y-axis, and you will get lambda m zero, the molar conductance at infinite dilution. But for weak electrolyte, if it is case real, strong electrolyte, but acetic acid is a weak electrolyte, and there is a steep increase in the molar conductance upon dilution. This is because in strong electrolyte at the appreciable concentration itself, that is, it is completely dissociated. And therefore, the interionic attraction, it is, that is very strong at concentration is very high, but upon dilution, interionic attraction decreases, thereby the conductance increases. But in the case of weak electrolyte, it is not completely ionized at appreciable concentration, and therefore the number of ions are very less upon dilution. You know that according to the that is Ostwald dilution law, the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte increases upon dilution. That means when it is diluted, the degree of dissociation, the fraction of moles undergoing dissociation increases, thereby the number of ions are increasing and there will be a steep increase in the molar conductance. Therefore, we cannot extrapolate that graph to the y-axis. You will not get the value of the molar conductance at infinite dilution from the graph. In such cases, you have to use the Kolderasch's law. What is the Kolderasch's law states? The Kolderasch's law states that at infinite dilution, the ions are migrating independently and the sum of the ionic conductance is the molar conductance at infinite dilution. For example, the molar conductance of sodium chloride is sum of the ionic conductance of sodium ion and chloride ion. And that of HCl is sum of the ionic conductance of H plus and Cl minus. And these are two strong electrolytes. And if you add these two, the sum is the sum of the ionic conductance of Na plus Cl minus as well as H plus and Cl minus. And that is the Kolderasch's law states. And by using this Kolderasch's law, we can calculate the molar conductance at infinite dilution of a weak electrolyte. And the method is, for example, acetic acid. And acetic acid is, that is a weak electrolyte, and the molar conductance at infinite dilution of acetic acid is equal to sum of the ionic conductance of acetate ion plus iodine ion. And in order to obtain this value, we have to use true strong electrolyte with acetate ion and hydrogen ion. Sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte containing acetate ion, and HCl is a strong electrolyte containing, that is H plus ion. And the sum of the ionic conductance of acetate ion and sodium ion it is a molar conductance at infinite dilution of sodium acetate and that of H plus and Cl minus, it is the molar conductance at infinite dilution of HCl. If you add these two, you will get 
the sum of the ionic conductance of acetate ion plus sodium ion plus H plus ion plus Cl minus. From that, if you subtract that of sodium ion and chloride ion, you will get the sum acetate ion plus hydrogen ion. And in order to that, you have to find the molar conductance at infinite dilution of sodium chloride, and that is Na plus and Cl minus. Therefore, 1 plus 2 minus 3, 1 plus 2 minus 3 will give the molar conductance at infinite dilution of acetic acid. This is the way in which the Kohlrausch's law helps to find out the molar conductance at infinite dilution of a weak electrolyte. Here the question it is, you have to find out the molar conductivity of ammonium hydroxide. That means you have to use a strong electrolyte containing ammonium ion and a strong electrolyte containing hydroxyl ion and you have to subtract the remaining part and that is the way in which we can do. And here we can use ammonium hydroxide is equal to barium hydroxide plus 2 into ammonium chloride minus barium chloride by 2. This is because that is barium hydroxide is sum of the barium ion plus 2 hydroxyl ion. 2 ammonium chloride means sum of the 2 ammonium ion and 2 Cl minus and from that you have to subtract barium and 2 chloride ion. For that you have to subtract barium chloride and then you will get for 2 ammonium hydroxide and in order to get the value of ammonium hydroxide you have to divide it by 2 therefore the choice is C. This is the way in which Kohlrausch's law helps. Which of the following is the cell reaction that occurs when the following half cells are combined. And uh, we know that that is the reduction potential increases. That can reduce easily. That can be reduced easily. That means it is a more powerful oxidizing agent. And here iodine, the reduction potential is 0.54 and that is for bromine, it is 1.09. That is, bromine is a more powerful oxidizing agent than iodine, and therefore, bromine can oxidize iodide ion to iodine. That is, bromine can displace iodine from their salt solution. Therefore, among the following choice, in which bromine acts as an oxidizing agent and itself be get reduced, and iodine act as a reducing agent and it shall be get oxidized. It is choice C. In choice C, iodide ion is being get oxidized and bromine is being get reduced. That is, bromine is a powerful oxidizing agent. Bromine can displace iodine from its salt solution. Chlorine can displace both bromine and iodine from their salt solution. And that is the way in which we have to look into that. Fifteenth question, which of the following is not an application of electrochemical series? Electrochemical series or activity series or EMF series is a series of elements arranged in the increasing order of their reduction potential or decreasing order of their oxidation potential. That is lithium, it is minus 3.05 volt. It is the first member in the activity series. And the fluorine, it is having the highest reduction potential plus 2.87. And therefore, the lithium is the first member and fluorine is the last member and hydrogen with zero is the middle member. Any element above hydrogen, it is a powerful reducing agent and any element which is below hydrogen, it is a powerful oxidizing agent. And among all the elements, which is the most powerful reducing agent, lithium. Among all the elements, which is the most powerful oxidizing agent, fluorine. And we can find out whether a reaction will take place or not by looking into the activity series. That is zinc, it is point, minus 0.76 volt and silver plus 0 0.80. That means silver is much below zinc. And therefore, zinc can reduce silver ion from their salt solution. 
but silver cannot reduce zinc ion from their salt solution that is the zinc is acting as a reducing agent and zinc sulfide zinc sulfate cannot can be stored in silver vessel because zinc ions cannot be get reduced by silver but silver nitrate cannot be that is taken in zinc vessel because silver ions are get reduced by zinc copper it is having a reduction potential of minus point a uh, plus point 34 volt that is it is above silver but below zinc and therefore if you treat that is copper with silver that is copper can displace silver ion from their salt solution silver nitrate cannot be stored in copper vessel but copper sulfate can be stored in silver vessel that is reaction will not takes place similarly copper and zinc zinc is above copper and therefore that is zinc itself being get reduced by that is it's, it's it can it, it can it can reduce cupric ions from their salt solution that is copper sulfate solution cannot be stored in zinc vessel but that is zinc sulfate solution can be stored in copper vessel that is we can predict whether a reaction will take place or not by looking into the activity series another application is hydrogen ion are pre in present in acid and therefore any element above hydrogen can displace hydrogen from their salt solution zinc can displace hydrogen from uh, sorry from acid that is zinc plus sulfuric acid hydrogen will be produced zinc plus hydrochloric acid hydrogen will be produced but copper cannot displace hydrogen from acid silver cannot displace hydrogen from acid and these are the various application of activity series which of the following is not an application of electrochemical series to compare the relative oxidizing and reducing power of the substance we have already mentioned it can be used for comparing the oxidizing power and the reducing power to predict evolution of hydrogen gas on reaction of metal with acid it can be also used to predict spontaneity of a redox reaction that can be also predict and d to calculate the amount of metal deposited on cathode it cannot be calculated by using activity series that depends upon the faraday's laws of electrolysis given below are the standard electrode potential of fuse half cells the correct order of these metals in increasing reducing power will be that is increasing reducing power means its reduction potential is very less and its oxidation potential is very high that is potassium minus 2.93 silver 0.80 and magnesium minus 2.37 and chromium minus 0.74 our silver cannot act as a reducing agent and that is silver is less than chromium is less than magnesium is less than potassium therefore the choice is b nacl mgcl2 and caso4 are known as alkalis with different values of that is molar conductance because the molar conductance of nacl is some of the ionic conductance of sodium ion and chloride ion magnesium ion is some of the ionic conductance of one magnesium ion and two chloride ion calcium sulfate is a some of the ionic conductance of calcium 2 plus and so for two minus so for the answer is c which of the following is the correct cell representation for the given cell reaction that is a galvanic cell can be represented by anode on the left hand side and cathode on the right hand side and uh, they are separated by salt bridge to parallel lines that is here zinc acts as the oxidizer zinc is being get oxidized therefore zinc acts as the anode and hydrogen ion is being get reduced and the hydrogen is acting as the cathode therefore the answer is a zinc bar zinc 2 plus and salt bridge h plus and h2 here it is sulfuric acid is used that is why we are using but if hydrogen gas is used you have to use h plus h2 and platinum 0.2964 gram of copper was deposited on passage of a current of 0.5 ampere for 30 minutes through a solution of copper sulfate 
calculate the oxidation stress of copper. The equation is that is W is equal to E by F into I into T, but E is equal to the atomic mass by the valency. Then you will get the valency. Therefore, W 0.2694 is equal to 63.56 by N. The whole divided by 96,500 into I into T. That is 0.5 into 30 into 60. That is 30 minutes means 30 into 60. When you do it, you will get N as plus 2. Answer is B. The cell constant for a electrical conductivity cell having two electrodes of area capital A placed at a distance of L is expressed as L by A. Answer is A. The cell constant is L by A where L is the length between these two, that is electrode and area cross section A and that is known as the cell constant. And that about the electrochemistry, redox reaction and the electrochemistry. If any doubt, you may please ask. Otherwise, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.